Hello and welcome into the game four review of the round one series versus the Toronto Maple Leafs in 2019. Now the Bruins do pull off the win here. However, I don't necessarily think the Bruins were the better team in this game. Now, that being said, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the result. And the Bruins get a huge road win in Toronto to tie the series up 2-2. And we'll be headed back to Boston on Friday night to take on the Leafs. And another, what I would say, must-win game. You need to maintain the home ice. That way you can at least get a chance to win in Game 6, but an extremely good opportunity at home to win in Game 7. Because if you lose Game 5 on uh, at home, good luck in Game 6 on the road. Because that's going to be a, a freaking very tough environment to win. Because at least we'll have a chance to close this out at home. So that's another must-win game. So don't get too confident, Bruins fans. You need to win Game 5 before you can be confident, in my opinion. Uh, as you can see down below, I have the shots up down there, 42 to 31 with the Leafs along. If you look at the blocks, man, uh, 25 blocks to the Leafs, 12, which means the Leafs are taking a ton of shots. They outshot us immensely. But at the end of the day, if your shots don't go in the net, they don't really matter. Uh, Face-off percentage, it was nice to see the Bruins win this category. I'm pretty sure this is the first game of the series they have won that category. Uh, you're going to see right there, 2 for 2 on the power play. Special teams is on point today. Uh, Leafs one for three. So uh, end of the day, that difference might have been that power play goal. Uh, hits fairly even, and as you can see, the shots of Bruins fourteen to twelve in the first period. I thought the Bruins' best period was the first period. And I thought they outplayed the Leafs in the first period. I thought the Leafs were clawing back in the second and the third. The Bruins were just putting in their opportunities when they got them. And very opportunistic, and that's what you got to be sometimes. You don't have to be the best team to win a game. And the Bruins weren't the best team on the ice tonight. But they won the game because they made the most of their opportunities and their high skill players prevailed in this one. So let's break down each goal by goal, or at least talk about each goal. I don't want to spend too much time. There's 10 goals, so if I spend too much time on each one, we'll be here all day. McAvoy gets the Bruins on the board three minutes and three seconds into the first. Wait, that's not reverse. No, that is three minutes and three seconds in the first. For some reason, I was like, wait, is that reverse? No, on the power play, Bruins go to the power play. First unit doesn't get it done. Second unit comes out there, and Grizzly, Coyle, and McAvoy combined for a great passing play. McAvoy with a one-timer. He had a very good sell. I couldn't find a good pitcher on it, but he jumps into the boards. Really gets you hyped as a Bruins fan to see Charlie McAvoy coming into his own. Charlie McAvoy is going to be the best Bruins defenseman next year. I thought Brandon Carlo this year was our best defenseman for consistency reasons, but Charlie McAvoy is that guy going forward. And he has to be if the Bruins are going to be successful in this league. Uh, you then move on to Brad Marshawn, putting the Bruins up 2 to nothing with another beautiful play by Charlie McAvoy here. You can see he gets the puck down low in the bottom corner of the rink. Throws it cross-crease to Marshawn, who taps the pass Anderson. Not much Anderson can really do about there. In 6 minutes and 38 seconds in the game, the Bruins are already up 2 nothing, And the Leafs weren't helping Anderson much there. Hyman then would then strike with a good point shot from Riley. You throw it into traffic. Hyman gets a tip on it. When you put as many shots as the Leafs did tonight, you're going to get some bounces if you throw the puck at the net that many times. Hyman gets a stick on the puck, and it beats Rask with the redirect. Matthews in the early second period, one minute and seven seconds, would tie up the game. And this is a bad moment for Tuka Rask. And I know Austin Matthews is a great shooter, but he should have this save. It goes right through his... Uh, Armpit, uh, left side armpit, my bad, I'm looking reverse. You can see where Austin Matthews takes the shot. It's not the best angle, it's not the best play shot. Tuka Rask is expecting to go corner though, which is why he doesn't probably get his arms closed in time. Uh, I'd like to see Tuka say that. Nonetheless, the Leafs tie up 2-2. Two two. However, the Bruins would respond in great fashion. And finally, the person I've been waiting for to come alive the most, David Posnerock. And yes, I grouped these two goals together because I don't want to make 20 slides for this game. Um, <laughs> in all seriousness, though, like it was very important to get David Posnerock on the board and get David Posnerock into this series as a force. That is how the Bruins are going to win this series, and David Posnerock, I think, was the difference in this game. In the first period, I think he was only on the ice for about four and a half minutes. Uh, he wasn't playing good, but then he came alive, and when David Posnerock gets scoring, David Posnerock gets confident, and that's very important. Uh, he'd have a great, he would have a tip in on a great passing play between him and Marshawn. Marshawn would throw the sauce. In front of Posnarok, Posnarok would beat Mitch Marner, and he would get the tip past Frederick Anderson. Frederick Anderson not really liking his team right now with the goals that are getting let up against him because there's not too much he can do about them. And on the fourth goal for the Bruins, a one-timer on the power play. 
and Anderson is not liking the opportunities that his team is giving up. Because the team in front of them, I, I should say, they were putting on the pressure of the Maple Leafs more so in this game than the Bruins. They were controlling the game more so than the Bruins. But they just have these breakdowns, and the Bruins would take advantage of them. So, at the end of the day, sometimes that's the difference. Uh, anyway, Postnarok getting two goals here, first and second of the series. That is not a good sign if you're a Leafs fan. Great sign if you're a Bruins fan. And the Bruins will go 4-2, go to the early third period, or about five minutes into the third period. And uh, I didn't show Char taking the slap shot here because you really have to respect the screen by Patrice Bergeron, in my opinion, because this is not a hard shot from Char from the point. This is like a half clap towards the net. He beats Anderson near post because it's an extremely well-placed shot through the traffic, which is impressive for Chara. But uh, also, you got Bergeron fighting with Zaitsev down low. Where is that Dermot? I can't tell. I think that's I think that's Zaitsev, though. 22 is Zaitsev, right? Dermot's 23, I think. Yeah, I think that's Zaitsev. I can't read the name, though. I'm not good with numbers. But uh, fighting down low with Zaitsev. Anderson, you see, he's peeking. He's like, where is the puck? Where is the shot coming from? Because Tavares is also kind of screening up top. Puck gets through and beats him. And uh, 5-2, really hard lead to come back from, but the Leafs would get going. The Leafs would be swarming in the th late third period. About less than 10 minutes to go, the Leafs started to turn into that extra gear, and they would get two on the boards. You'd have a great pass on the power play. McAvoy would go to the box for a high stick. Yes, it was a high stick on Hyman, and uh, those two guys really don't like each other. But uh, Marner with a beautiful pass over to Matthews, basically giving an empty net. Not much Rask can do there. Then uh, about a minute later, I want to say, no, about a minute and a half later, it looks like, Dermot with a shot from the point, it goes through everything. As you can see, Tuca heavily screened. I think it hits off Noel at Shari and goes top shelf. Uh, hard for Tuca to see that, hard for Tuca to react to that redirect. Leafs to make it 5-4. But then after this, the Bruins, right when you think they're about to collapse, they really tighten up with some great shifts. I was thinking to myself, you really need a good shift here. They got a good shift. Then the next shift, a really good shift, a really good shift. Smart plays by Marshawn. Smart plays by Coyle. Smart plays by the Bruins forwards to not create turnovers in bad areas. And yes, the Leafs had a chance or two, but that's going to happen when there's six minutes on the clock. But overall, great defensive work after looking like they were going to collapse. And the Bruins close out. They get the empty net with two seconds left. I actually put a little money on the Bruins to win by two tonight. So I was grateful to see that puck go past... Uh, the Toronto line of defense and Joachim Nordstrom get it and put it in because, you know, betting is a little fun. I don't bet too much, though. Um, as for that, though, a really, really important and necessary win for the Boston Bruins going forward in this series because if they lost this game, there was a good chance they were not winning this series. I would, I would have favored the Leafs if the Bruins had lost this game. I now favor the Bruins because they have the home ice advantage, and that is important in this series. Um, Tuka Rask earns his 37th career playoff win which is the most in Bruins history, which Tukaras is like quietly racking up these Bruins records. I mean, it's, it's because he's a above average goal. He, he's nothing like special, like in the sense of like Carey Price, for example, or Patrick Waugh or like legendary stats, but he's just a really good goaltender in my opinion. And I know a lot of Bruins fans don't like him. I don't really dislike or like Rask. I just noticed that he's a solid goaltender and we don't have Martin Jones, so we can't complain too much. Um, game five will be on Friday. I'll be reviewing that one probably late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Hopefully I can get that one up a little bit earlier than this one. And the big thing, this right here, the fourth line tonight was garbage. I think if you watch the game, you know this one, uh, they were on the ice, the Leafs bullied them. Sean Corrali is a game time decision for game five. And Sean Corrali is the spark plug that ran the Bruins fourth line this year, which made them a very good force. When you had Corrali at center, Wagner on the wing, and Achari on the other wing, very tough line to match up against with speed. I don't think Achari's been good in the center role on the fourth line and moving him up the wing would be better. He doesn't fit in the center role. Sean Corrali does. He's a fast player, brings energy, and that's a very good sign for the Bruins because that is the line that has been torched. And for all you know, the fourth line, them getting Corrali could be a big difference in whether the Bruins win or lose this series. You don't know. But uh, overall, I'm really happy with the result. The Bruins could have played better, but on the road, you know, Sometimes you're going to get outplayed, and you need to win games you get outplayed in sometimes to win the Stanley Cup. You're not going to win the Stanley Cup, well, most of the time. You're not going to win the Stanley Cup by only winning games you outplay teams in. You need a little bit of luck to win the Cup. And the Bruins got a little bit of luck tonight. They executed. I'm not saying it was all luck. They executed, and they deserved the win. They didn't necessarily outplay the Leafs, so I know that might be confusing to say. But uh, they put the puck in the net more. They took advantage of their opportunities. They deserved to win because of that. 
And we're moving on. The Bruins need to win game five. It's an important game. I hope you like this video. If you want to follow me on Twitter, hit me with that follow. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below. Tell me your thoughts on the game or how stupid I am. I love those comments. <laughs> and uh, subscribe if you like my content. I'm going to be covering the rest of the Bruins playoffs, and I hope it lasts a while. I'll see you next time. Peace.